the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Peace be with you. And Brothers and sisters, I will offer this Mass for all of your intentions today. Let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O oh God, by whom you are redeemed and receive adoption, look graciously upon your beloved sons and daughters, that those who believe in Christ may receive true freedom and an everlasting inheritance through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, if I preach the gospel, this is no reason for me to boast, for an obligation has been imposed on me, and woe to me if I do not preach it. If I do so willingly, I have recompense. But if unwillingly, then I have been entrusted with a stewardship. What then is my recompense? that when I preach, I offer the gospel free of charge so as not to make full use of my right in the gospel. Although I am free in regard to all, I have made myself a slave to all so as to win over as many as possible. I have become all things to all to save at least some. All this I do for the sake of the gospel so that I too may have a share in it. Do you not know that the runners in the stadium all run in the race, but only one wins the prize. Run so as to win. Every athlete exercises discipline in every way. They do it to win a perishable crown, but we an imperishable one. Thus I do not run aimlessly. I do not fight as if I were shadow boxing. No, I drive my body and train it for fear that after having preached to others, I myself should be disqualified. The word of the Lord. Sparrow finds a home 
and a swallow a nest in which she puts her young. Your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. How love. Continually they praise you. Blessed the man whose strength you are. Their hearts are set upon the pilgrimage. How lovely is your dwelling place, Lord, mighty God. For a son and a shield From those who walk in sincerity. How lovely is your dwelling place, Lord, mighty God. from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus took his disciple a parable. Can a blind person guide a blind person? Will not both fall into a pit? No disciple is superior to the teacher, but when fully trained, Every disciple will be like his teacher. Why do you notice the splinter in your brother's eyes, but do not receive the wooden beam in your own? How can you say to your brother, Brother, let me remove the splinter in your eye, when you do not even notice the wooden beam in your own eye? You hypocrite. Remove the wooden beam from your eyes first. Then you will see clearly to remove the splinter in your brother's eyes. The Gospel of the Lord.
My brothers and sisters in Christ, good afternoon. good afternoon. Wow, you look magnificent. What a beautiful crowd. So many of you came here. I know my brother priests and I are thrilled that you are here, and so many of you here to our Blessed Mother Shrine here, and I'm very, very happy to be here also. For those of you who were here last year, I was, you, you know who I am, but for those who don't know who I am, I'm Bishop Joe Coffey. And I'm an auxiliary bishop for the military archdiocese. And believe it or not, when I th thank you. When I tell people that, sometimes they say to me, what is that? They've actually never heard of it, which is okay. What it means is everybody who's Catholic and serving in our military, the Army, the Navy, the Air Force, the Marine Corps, the Coast Guard, the Merchant Marine, the Space Force, while they're in the military, they belong to the military archdiocese. And as you know, we have military members all over the world, which means geographically it's the largest archdiocese in the world. We have Archbishop Brolio is our military archbishop. He is headquartered in Washington, D.C., and he's also the president of the United States Conference of Catholic Bishops. So in military terms, he has a very large collateral duty. But he has four auxiliary bishops who help him. Bishop Spencer covers all of our military bases east of the Mississippi River. That's over 100 military bases. Bishop Buchan, who lives in San Diego, covers our bases west of the Mississippi River. Bishop Bill Mum, who was ordained with me back in March of 2019, he lives in Germany and he takes care of all of our U.S. military bases in Europe and Asia. He has 10 time zones. And I just have one country. I have United States. But that's the, all the veterans' hospitals. So we have over 150 veterans' hospitals in our country. And I have the great joy and pleasure and honor of traveling all over the country visiting our veterans hospitals. I've been to 49 states. I have one to go. Idaho. So that's the last state that I need to get to. Then I will have been to all 50 states. And I too am a veteran. I served for 28 years in the Navy as a Navy chaplain. And I know we have some veterans out there. Let's hear it for our veterans. So thank you very much for your service, and my official title is Vicar for Veterans Affairs. So now you know who your vicar is. <laughs> you probably didn't know who that was, right? Well, I'm the fifth of nine kids. I'm from Philadelphia. I have 46 nieces and nephews and 39 greats. Isn't it great to be Catholic? <laughs> and we all love our Blessed Mother. And that's why we're here. So last year I talked a little bit about this beautiful shrine. I want to do that again this year because I'm sure there's at least a few people here who don't really know the story of this truly magnificent property. But in the early years of the Cold War, having discovered Our Lady of Fatima's message, a Monsignor Harold Colgan partnered with a businessman named John Hafner, Heffert, and they created the Blue Army of Our Lady of Fatima. And members of this Blue Army were the spiritual force standing against the atheistic practices of the Soviet Union. They pledged to offer their daily sufferings and difficulties for the conversion of sinners, to pray the rosary every day, to wear the brown scapular as a sign of consecration to Mary's Immaculate Heart, and to participate in the five First Saturday devotions. The pledge which Sister Lucia herself helped formulate quickly gained popularity throughout the United States and soon became a worldwide movement with between 30 and 40 million people having signed the Blue Army Pledge. 
In the early 1950s, Monsignor Colgan, together with John Hafford, established the Ave Maria Institute right here on this beautiful property, which was John Hafford's farm. Today, this site is known and loved as the National Blue Army Shrine of Our Lady of Fatima, and it is dedicated to the Mother of Mary and the Mother of Jesus, Mother of Jesus and our Mother's Immaculate Heart. At the heart of this shrine is our Lord's Eucharistic presence in the Blessed Sacrament Chapel. And you know that magnificent bronze statue above us of our Immaculate Heart of Mary towers 130 feet above the shrine. And this roof represents the flowing and protecting mantle of Mary of all her children. The Holy House Chapel was dedicated in 1973. It's a scale replica of the Holy House of Loretto in the country of Italy that honors our Holy Family. And Pope St. John the 23rd said that it was the holiest place on earth. So when they were building the chapel here at the shrine, the builders took a stone from that Holy House in Loretto, Italy, they pulverized the stone and then mixed that into the, into the mortar of the stones on this beautiful chapel here. So we can know that that has such a, a beautiful thing and it's such a beautiful chapel. And just as it's her desire that we, um, excuse me, just a few months ago, I had the great joy of going to the National Eucharistic Congress in Indianapolis, Indiana. In the same year, um, we were able to go, um, and this was on, many of you were probably able, were able to go, and I'm sure many of you watched it on EWTN. I really can't express in words how truly beautiful it was. The bishops of the United States began planning this a couple of years ago, and I remember being at the meeting in Baltimore when they first discussed this National Eucharistic Congress to be held in Indianapolis. So Bishop Barron, Robert Barron, was initially in charge, but then he moved to a new committee. And then a very young bishop, Andrew Cousins, was given the responsibility, and he did a magnificent job. It started out with a nationwide Eucharistic pilgrimage from the north, the south, the east, and the west. And the eastern part began in the, in the state of Connecticut. And a few days later, it came to my hometown of Philadelphia. And for several days, there were special masses and events, and I was able to go to a few of them. And Father Landry and some of the young, strong, and very healthy people were these pilgrims that marched many, many, many hundreds of miles with our Blessed Sacrament. And there were a couple of religious sisters that joined them from Connecticut. So all four of those groups eventually met together in Indianapolis, Indiana. And I knew it was going to be very, something very special, so I was able to go with my younger brother, Jim. We drove out from Philadelphia for the four days of the Congress. And there were Catholics from all over America there, young and old, rich and poor, and they spoke many different languages. It was absolutely a beautiful glimpse of what the Catholic Church is. We know that Catholic means universal. These were all Catholics coming to Indianapolis to adore our Lord in the Eucharist. So for several days, they had many wonderful talks, and many good speakers. And on Saturday, they had the Eucharistic procession. You just have to try to imagine the scene. When the bishops left the convention center, we couldn't believe what we saw. Thousands and thousands of people lining the streets of Indianapolis, downtown, right by the convention center. And the procession was started by about 200 seminarians in cassock and surplice, followed by about 200 deacons and a couple hundred religious sisters in many different habits and colors, 
followed by about a thousand priests and 200 bishops. If you can just try to imagine the joy and the love of that crowd, because they love the church, they love their seminarians, their sisters, their priests, their bishops, but primarily they love our Lord in the Eucharist, and they were there to adore him. So we went first, the procession, and there was this tremendous sense of joy, people waving, clapping, crying, calling out the bishop's names. Half the crowd knew Bishop Barron. A couple people said, hi, Bishop Coffee." I paid them. No. no, just kidding. But then after we went was a flatbed truck with a gigantic monstrance with Bishop Cousins kneeling in front of the monstrance. And as the truck went by the people, they grew silent and they knelt down to adore our Lord in the Blessed Sacrament. And then we got to this park, an outdoor park, high up on a hill, and Bishop Cousins raised up the monstrance and blessed the crowd below. It's a sight that I hope I never, ever forget. And then the next day was the closing mass at the Oil, Lucas Oil Stadium. That's a football stadium where the Indianapolis Colts play their football games on Sunday. And over 60,000 people were registered. So there were at least that many. And Cardinal Tegel, who was from the Philippines, he was the main celebrant. And people love him. I know a lot of you know him. He might be the next pope. Not that I'm making any predictions or anything. I don't have any infi inside information. He is just well-loved. So that was the National Eucharistic Congress, the 10th in America. The last one, the ninth one, was 83 years ago in Milwaukee. And I kept thinking, why was it so long since the last one. Now, we did have an International Eucharistic Congress in Philadelphia in 1976. And I was there, I was in high school, and my mother volunteered me to be an usher at the cathedral. When our mothers volunteer us, we go, right? <laughs> and at that International Eucharistic Congress in Philadelphia was a certain cardinal from Krakow. Karol Wojtyla. He was at the International Eucharistic Congress in Philadelphia in 1976, and two years later, he became Pope John Paul II, which is amazing. But I kept wondering why it took so long for us to have another National Eucharistic Congress. And when I was at the Congress experiencing that incredible joy, I realized, because the Lord knew we needed it right now, right now is why we needed it. These last couple of years, we know, have been very, very difficult. We had that awful pandemic. We have our fractured politics. We have an election coming up. We have a lot of anxiety in our country. A lot of young people, we know, the pandemic really, really hurt many of them with their relationships, with how they interact with people. And they're talking about record numbers of depression, things like that. So I think the Lord knew that we really, really needed that National Eucharistic Congress. So we have to know, though, that if we love Jesus, he's in charge. We know he has the final victory. Sister P, I was listening to your talk. I was downstairs in the chapel where it's nice and air-conditioned. But two days ago, I was at the Padre Pio Shrine in Bartow, Pennsylvania. I hope you've been to that also. It's very beautiful. And what did St. Pio tell us? Pray, hope, and don't worry. And today's feast day, St. John Chrysostom. 
has a beautiful, beautiful commentary in the readings today in the breviary. So think about the times we're living in right now. Think about people who are anxious, people who are a little bit upset, people who are a little bit worried. Here's what John Chrysostom said. The waters have risen and severe storms are upon us. But we do not fear drowning, for we stand firmly upon a rock. Let the sea rage. It cannot break the rock. Let the waves rise. They cannot sink the boat of Jesus. What are we to fear? Death? Life to me means Christ, and death is gain. Exile? The earth and its fullness belongs to the Lord. The confiscation of goods? We brought nothing into this world, and we shall surely take nothing from it. I have only contempt for the world's threats. I find its blessings laughable. I have no fear of poverty, no desire for wealth. I am not afraid of death, nor do I long to live, except for your good. I concentrate, therefore, on the present situation, and I urge you, my friends, to have confidence. That was today's readings in the breviary that the priests and the religious sisters, we read our, our office, our breviary every day. That was the reading today. So what a great message for all of us to not worry too much about what's going on in the world because we have Jesus, right? And we have the Blessed Mother and St. Joseph and all the angels and saints. We have nothing to fear. We stay close to our Lord and we have this beautiful shrine. We have David Carolla, the director, and his wife who run the place, and they have an army of volunteers who help here. So thank you, all of you who work here and volunteer here, to make this such a beautiful shrine for our Blessed Mother. And thank all of you for coming, because when we come, we honor our Blessed Mother, and all she wants is for us to get closer to her son. Amen? Amen. God bless you. Please stand. Heavenly Father, you are glorified in Mary, the mother of God, in whom your son found a welcoming faith and love. In union with her, we offer you these petitions. For the holy church of God, that the Lord graciously watch over her and care for her, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Pope Francis and the whole order of bishops, that Christ may fill them with wisdom, courage, spiritual gifts, and graces. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the whole world, that its lasting tranquility and peace of our days may truly become acceptable time of grace and salvation, that God's peace may come to war torn areas through the triumph of the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For leaders around the world, that they might find ways to bring an end to war and violence, to promote peace and respect for dignity of life in all stages, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For perpetual and yearly mass association intentions for which this mass has been offered, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the holy souls in purgatory, that they may come quickly into the fullness of God's loving presence, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions of all the organizers of this Marian festival, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O Lord Jesus Christ, eternal wisdom, by the intercession of your holy mother Mary, receive the prayers of your people and grant them according to your holy will, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Please join us in singing our operatory song, Sweetheart of Jesus.
pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O God, who give us the gift of true prayer and of peace, graciously grant that through this offering we may do fitting homage to your divine majesty, and by partaking of the sacred mystery, we may be faithfully united in mind and heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with Lift up your hearts. Lift up let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as on the festival of St. John Chrysostom you bid your church rejoice, so too you strengthen her by the example of his holy life, teach her by his words of preaching, and keep her safe in answer to his prayers. And so, with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus Deus To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and James, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer the sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for yourselves, for themselves, and all who are dear to them for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being, and praying their homage to you, the <laughs> eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, her spouse, St. Joseph, the Lord Jesus Christ and blessed Joseph her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter, Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, <coughs> James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Samuel, and Jude, Lenus, Clenus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, and Chrysogonus. John and Paul, Cosmas and Damien, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands 
And with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension to heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gift of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar Receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with a sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who through those sinners hope in your abundant mercy, graciously grant some share in the fellowship with your apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, in their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord. Through whom you continue to make all these th good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called the Supper of the Lamb. My friends, we come to the most beautiful and solemn reception of Holy Communion. We ask you to remain in your seat until the ushers direct you for all the priests have gotten to their places. It does get a little windy up here, so if you could be extra careful and focused as we come forward in reverence to receive our Lord.
please join us in singing our communion song. Jesus, my Lord, my God, my own.
Let us pray. Grant, O merciful God, that these mysteries we have received as we commemorate St. John Chrysostom may confirm us in your love and enable us to be faithful in confessing your truth through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for a few moments. Um, I want to. I want to thank uh, Bishop Bishop Coffey for being here today, and appreciate your your inspiring homily and everything. Uh, and it's just uh, and and Sister Faustina, thank you for your beautiful talk today, and and inspiring people to embrace the message of Fatima. Uh, as you see, our ushers are taking the second collection at this point, and again, this is what keeps the shrine open. So anything you can do, any of your generosity in the past is appreciated, and your future generosity as well. We certainly appreciate everything we're doing. Uh, I want to thank all the uh, priests and deacons that come. Of course, Father Luke and Brother Pius, who on a daily basis keep this place rolling, as well as the staff in general. So I want to thank everybody there. Remember, the St. Padre Pio Novena starts tomorrow. So go in the back and get your... Is it tomorrow? Yes. Yeah, uh, so please, the 15th. I guess it's the 15th. Excuse me, Sunday. But if you would uh, put your intentions on here and be part of this novena. There are still 10 seats left unless there's some that have sold in the last couple hours, for the Fatima pilgrimage to uh, in November. And if you're interested, from November 18th to the 25th, it's a real beautiful experience. Again, today's the 13th. Add 13 and 13. And on the 26th, we ask that you would be in Trenton for the New Jersey right, you know, March for Life. So beautiful, such an event. The Knights of Columbus, the sisters will be there. I'm sure all of us who are Catholics understanding that this is this is the this is the cause of our time so let's please stand up and, and be part of it <clears throat> on the 29th of of the month here we're going to have our appreciation mass for the for the police and believe me we do appreciate everything they do to keep this shrine going so thank you again for everything and god bless you I, too, just would like to add a word of thanks again, David and your wife, Dorothy, for inviting me, for all the priests, the servers, and uh, how about that choir, huh? <laughs> Thank you for that very, very beautiful music. I'd just like to say a word to our young people out there. I don't want to give any ages of who's young, but... Those especially who are not sure of their vocation yet. For all you young ladies, the sisters give a beautiful example of religious sisters. And for the young men, if you're not sure of your vocation yet, altar servers especially, I hope the priests give good example. And what I can say is that if you follow what God wants you to do, you're going to be the most joyful in this life. And the only way to find that out is to pray and discern God's will. So if you're thinking about the priesthood, religious life, to become a sister or brother, talk to one of the sisters or one of us, and we'll encourage you. Please stand. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us go in peace, glorifying the Lord by our lives in Christ Jesus. Amen. Thanks be to God.